Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Zach Jones, and today I will be reading Chapter 1 from Doctor Who, Engines of War. Now, I will also be doing a playlist of all the videos, uh, including the chapters of the this book that I have uh, re been reading, but I'm going to be working on that anyway. Now, are you all sitting comfortably? Good. Have you all uh, got food and drink? If you have, that's good. If you haven't, then go get something. Okay. Now, are you ready? Now, sit back, relax, and enjoy. <coughs> Part 1, Moldox, Chapter 1. It had been three days since she'd last seen a Dalek. Three days since she'd notched another kill into the barrel of her gun. It was too long. She was starting to feel twitchy. What were they up to? The Dalek patrols had been spor sporadic of late, as though they were no longer bothering with the outlying ruins. They were massing in the city, corralling any surviving humans they found and shepherding them there too. Their plans had changed. Something new was happening. Maybe she'd have to think about moving again, and just when she was starting to get comfortable too. Cinder lay on, her, lay on her belly in the dust and the dirt, perfectly still, surveying the road below the Shahala, her escarpment. So she'd heard that a Dalek patrol or what was already was coming this way, but that had been over an hour ago. Had one of the other resistance cells taken them out already? That seemed unlikely. If they had, she'd be aware of it by now. A message would have buzzed over the comm link. No, the likelihood was the Daleks had encountered another group of survivors and were processing them for enslavement, or else exterminating them, or as she preferred to call it, murdering them on the spot. Cinder clutched her weapon a little harder feeling a spark of anger at the thought. If they did come this way... She brus brushed her fringe out of her eyes. She had a bright shock of auburn hair, cut in a ragged mop around her shoulders. It was this that had originally earned her the name Cinder. Well, that and the fact that uh, she'd been found uh, in the still-burning ruins of her homestead, the only thing left alive after the Daleks had passed through. It seemed so long ago now, when the planet had burned, when they had all burned. Cinder had watched as every one of the worlds in the spiral had burst into candescence, lighting up the sky above Moldox, a twisting halix of flaming orbs, a, a whirl of newly christened stars. She'd been a child then, little more than a scrap of a thing. Yet, even at the early a at that early age, uh, she had known what the fire in the skies heralded for her and her kind. The Daleks had come. All hope was lost. Moldocks had fallen soon after, and life, if you could ever co call it that, had never been the same ever again. Her family died in the first days of the invasion, incinerated by a Dalek patrol as they tried to flee for cover. Cinder survived by hiding in an overturned metal dustbin, peering out through a tiny yoni rust hole at the carnage going on all around her, scared to so much as breathe. It took her almost a year before she felt safe enough to even make another sound. Days later, Confused and traumatised, she'd been found wandering among the wreckage of her former homestead and was taken in by a roaming band of resistance fighters. This was not, however, an act of kindness on the part of her fellow humans, but simply a means to an end. They needed a child amongst their ranks to help set traps for the Daleks, 
to sneak and scurry into the small places where the Daleks uh, couldn't follow. She'd spent the next 14 years learning how to fight, how to eke out an existence in the ruins, and growing angrier at every passing day. Everything she'd done since, everything, had been, been fueled by that burning fury, that desire for revenge. She knew the years of living hand to mouth had not served her well. She was thin, despite being muscular. Her skin was pale and her purely streaked with dirt. And whenever she found the time to look, look in a broken mirror, mirror or shattered pane of glass, all she saw staring back at her uh, was the pain and regret in her dark olive eyes. This, however, was her life now. Surviving day to day by scavenging food and hunting Daleks whenever the opportunity arose. All the while, out in the universe, the war between the Time Lords and the Daleks rolled on regardless, tearing up all of time and space in its wake. Sender had heard it, heard it said uh, that in simple, linear terms, the war had been going on for over 400 years. This, of course, was an untruth, or at least an, ir an irrelevance. Uh, the temporal war zones had permeated so far and so deep into the very structure of the universe that the conflict had, quite literally, been raging for eternity. There was no, no epoch that remained unscathed. And uncontested, no history that had not been rewritten. To many, it became known to be. To many, it was a, it, it had come to be known, perhaps ironically, as the Great Time War. To Cinder, it was simply hell. She shifted her weight from one elbow, and looked to the, to the other all the time keeping her eyes on the cracked ash uh, ashpiled road, watching for signs, waiting. They would come soon, she was sure of it. Earlier that day she'd destroyed another of their transporter, transponders, As a, and the patrol her, all that the others had spotted must have been dispatched to investigate. The Daleks were her nothing if not predictable. She scanned a row of jagged, broken buildings lining the opposite side of the road, looking for Finch. It was his turn to draw the Dalek fire while she took them out from behind. She couldn't see him amongst the ruins. Good, that meant he was keeping his head down. She hate, she'd hate if anything happened to him. He was one of the good ones. She might even go so far as to call him a friend. The front of the shattered buildings all along the roadside were blackened and splintered, the result of both the Dalek energy rays and, and the incendiary bombs used by the human defence forces as they tried to hold the invaders at bay. Ultimately, they failed in the face of overwhelming odds and, and an unflinching, uncaring enemy. The Daleks were utterly relentless, and within days, uh, the entire planet had been reduced to a smouldering ruin. Cinder could barely remember a time before the Daleks had come to Moldox. She had vague, impressionistic memories of gleaming spires and sprawling cities, wild forest and skies overflowing with scudding transport ships. Here, in the Tantalus Spiral, humans had achieved uh, their zenith, colonising uh, a vast corkscrew of worlds surrounding an immense, ghostly structure in space, the Tantalus Eye. It glared down at her now, ba bale balefully studying the events unfolding below. It must have but on witness to some horrors in the last decade and a half, she considered. 
Maldox had once been magnificent, majestic, but now it was nothing but a, but a dying world, misery clinging no, onto the last of the vestiges of life. There was a noise from the road below. Cinder pressed herself even deeper into the dirt and scrabbled forward a few inches, peering over the lip of the escarpment in order to see a little further along the road. The strap of her backpack was digging uncomfortably into her shoulder, but she ignored it. The Daleks were finally coming, just as she'd anticipated. Her pulse quickened. She squinted, trying to discern their numbers. She could make out five distinctive shapes, although her heart sank as they grew closer, and, the, and her view of them resolved. What, only one of them was a Dalek, hovering at the, at the back of a small group, as if herding the others on. Its bronze casing glinted in the, wa in the waning afternoon sun, and its eye stalks swivelled from side to side, surveying the path below. The rest of them uh, were Khaled mutants, Daleks of a kind, but twisted into new, disturbing forms by Time Lord interference. These were Scaro degradations, the result of Time Lord efforts to re-engineer Dalek history, to toy with the evolution of their origin species, probably in an attempt to sidestep the development of the Dalek race altogether. The results have been catastrophic, however, and in every permutation of reality, in every single possibility, the Daleks were asser assert had asserted themselves. They were not. They were not to be stopped. Whichever way Cinder saw it, it seemed that the universe wanted the Daleks. Many of these degradations were unstable, unpredictable, which to Cinder's mind. Was an even more dan was even more dangerous than the Daleks, and now they were being pressed into service here on Moldox. Cinder re readied her weapon. An energy gun ripped from the broken casing of a dying Dalek and lashed her up to a power pack, and fought the urge to flee. It was too late now. They were committed. She only hoped none of the degradations were carrying a weapon they hadn't faced before. As the patrol grew closer, Cinder got a proper look at them. Two of the degradations were, were near identical uh, and, and the kind as she had seen many times before. A humanoid torso in, in a refor reforced glass chamber, suspended beneath ether normal. Or Dalek head and eye stalk, three elongated panel, or the of black metal, uh, on black metal arms flanked its central column on the sides and rear. The panels were peppered with the same half globe sensors as the standard Dalek casings, and from each side jutted energy weapons mounted on narrow sp on uh, sponsons. The limbless torso inside of the glass chamber twitched nervously as the monstrous thing glided along, propelling them themselves through the air on plumes of blue light. Finch had dubbed these ones gliders. The others, however, were like nothing she had seen before. One of them was egg-shaped and mounted on a set of three spider-like limbs, scuttling scuttling along the road like a ha like a massive, terrifying insect. Once again, its casing was dotted with the same, familiar, half globes, although the, in this instance they were, were coal-black and embedded into panels on, of a deep, metallic red. The eye stalk was fatter, too, and its body, and from its body, your uh, blister bristled of four matching guns in emplacements, in place, gun emplacements. The final mutant appeared uh, to be almost identical to a normal Dalek, except that its middle section, which typically housed a manipulator arm and gun, 
being replaced by a revolving turret, upon which was mounted a single, massive energy cannon. Cinder tried to swallow, but her mouth was dry. There was no way she could at risk allowing that cannon to get, at a, to get off a shot. The results would be devastating, and Finch would ha have next to no chance of getting clear. That one had to be her first target. She sensed movement in the ruins, and a quick glance to told her that Finch was already on the move, dashing from cover to cover to draw the Dalek's attention. A Dalek set... The Dalek sensed it, too, and its eye stalk swivelled in Finch's direction. Cease! Show yourself! Surrender, and you will not be exterminated! The Dalek's harsh metallic rasp sent a shiver down Cinder's spine as it echoed along the otherwise empty road. She watched for Finch, trying to discern him in the ruins, to anticipate his next move. There was no chance that he'd obey the Dalek's orders, even if, if it was lying. If it wasn't lying, extermination there had to be a better uh, alternative to being enslaved by these monsters. There! She saw him move again, near to, near to the remains of a burnt-out homestead, and the Dalek swiveled, letting off three shots, successive blasts of it, Three short, excessive blasts from its weapon. The high-pitched wail of the energy discharge was near deafening. There was a flash of intense white light, followed by the crumble of an explosion, and the remains of the, da of the damaged wall toppled into a heap, close to where Finch had been hiding only seconds before. Smoke curled lazily from the ruins in the still air. Seek! Locate! Destroy! ordered the Dalek. Find the human and exterminate! We obey! chorused the degradations in their warbling, synthetic voices. The two gliders rose a, up on spears of light, and, uh, and the uh, others fanned out, covering the ruins with their weapons. The patrol had separated, and Cinder saw her chance. She pushed herself on, up onto her knees, hefted the Dalek weapon to her shoulder, and sighted along the length of the notched barrel. She drew a, she drew a bee heed on the heed on the on the head of the degradation with the cannon, took a deep breath, and fired. The weapon issued a short powerful blast of energy, and the force of the discharge almost sent her reeling. She kept her shoulder locked in position, steadying herself, the air filled with the stench of burning ozone. Her aim was true, and the energy beam lanced across the, across the mutant's bronze carapace, scorching a deep black furrow and detonating one of its re radiation valves. It did not, however, have the desired effect of causing its head to explode in spectacular fashion. Instead, it, ele it elicited an, an altogether more unwelcome response. Under attack! Under attack! bellowed at the degradation, rot rotating its head a full 180 degrees uh, to scan the top of the escarpment. Human female armed with Dalek neutralizer, exterminate, exterminate. Panicked, Cinder glanced uh, at, at the gun in her hands. What had gone wrong? She'd never known a Dalek to survive an energy blast from one of its own weapons. Did this new kind of mutant have specially reinforced armor? Whatever the case, all she'd succeeded in doing was broadcasting her location. She had to act quickly, take out the leader. She twisted, raising the gun and closing her left eye, drawing a line of sight on the Dalek, uh, like as it shifted 
in its own bulk around, preparing to return fire. She squeezed the makeshift trigger and the weapon bla- and spat another bolt of searing energy. The shot found its mark, striking the Dalek just beneath the eye stalk. The casing detonated uh, with, with a satisfying crack, erupting the sensor gu so grills and spilling a in the biomass of the dead Khaled inside. Flames licked at the, the edges of the ragged wound as green flesh bubbled and popped, oozing out with a grotesque hiss. Cinder didn't have any to have time to celebrate, however, as the egg-shaped degradation opened fire in response. Its full weapons barked in quick succession, like chattering ar artillery guns, and ch churning up the impacted l home along the top of the escarpment. She threw herself backwards, rolling for cover, but it was too late. The impact had de he stabilized uh, the ground, and the edge of the, the escarpment collapsed uh, in a crashing landslide of mud and soil. Cinder felt the world give way behind her, beneath her. She screamed, clutching the gun for all she was worth, as she tumbled head over heels towards the assembled degradations below. Well, that was chapter one of, um, no, uh, of Engines of War. For the next chapter, I will leave the link down below. But also, Please subscribe and uh, comment on my videos as I really could do some feedback, okay? You'll have a nice day.